Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Mary Beth Lee, and I'm joined here with my colleague, Chase Sims. Today, for our What's New webinar, we're going to be focusing on PowerUps, which are storm services and packages that are available within Synapse and that you can use to help power up your analysis. So what we'll do today is we'll go and do an overview of Synapse, and then I'll do an introduction to PowerUps. I'll tell you what they are and how you can use them. And then I'll go over switch to the UI and we'll do a tour of the PowerUps tool and I'll show you where you can find some additional resources for PowerUps that are in there. And then I'm going to hand it over to Chase and he's going to walk us through a case study showing how you can use PowerUps to help facilitate ingesting and then processing open source research. So before we get to PowerUps, we'll take a moment to talk about Synapse in case there's anybody who is new and is unfamiliar with either Synapse or with the Vertex project. Uh, Synapse is a versatile central intelligence system that we at the Vertex project created. We designed it so that we could support analysts through every stage of the intelligence lifecycle. With Synapse, users are able to facilitate um, fusing interdisciplinary data, platforms, and teams all within a single system. Um, this helps to allow analysts to work together when they're analyzing information. So one of the ways that Synapse goes and um, fuses data platforms and teams is through what we call PowerUps. PowerUps are Vertex pro project created storm services and packages um, that allow analysts to extend Synapse's functionality to integrate additional data and then to enrich their analysis and ask additional questions of that data. If you're familiar with any of the webinars that we've done in the past, like our webinars on fork and merge or on automation or on um, Dara Grid, then you might have seen us use PowerUps in the past. We've done things with them like ingest uh, passive DNS data for a domain or create a JIRA ticket to track additional work that we needed to do or to run files against YAR rules that we had saved within our Snaps UI. Uh, we categorize our Synapse PowerUps as being either rapid or advanced. Today, we're going to mostly focus on rapid PowerUps. Um, rapid PowerUps are those that are ready to use out of the box. They don't require any sort of DevOps support to get them installed and started. Um, these are things that you can really just click install, which I'll show you how to do. Our Vertex developers have already done all that work for you, so you don't need no developer resources. PowerUps facilitate every aspect of the Synapse workflow, everything from ingesting and enriching data through to reporting. Um, this allows analysts to keep all of their work within the Synapse interface. Um, analysts can therefore use Synapse to connect with a range of external resources. Some of the examples of things that analysts might use PowerUps to do could be to fuse third-party data. Say that you have a malware sample that you're investigating, you could use our Synapse hybrid analysis power up to go and import that malware execution data um, from the hybrid analysis sandbox. Other power ups do things like enable active data collection. Um, with our Synapse Net Tools power up, for example, you could go and perform live DNS and who is record lookups and then ingest those records into your Synapse UI. With other power ups, you could leverage existing data. An example of this would be our Synapse Yara power up. Um, you can create and validate and manage our rules, and then you can also run files against those rules and have the records of the results in your um, Synapse UI. With other PowerUps, you can extend Synapse's functionality, like our Synapse S3 Axon um, allows you to store file blobs. And then we do have PowerUps that also allow you to add a new analytic capability. Um, one of these would be our Synapse Search PowerUp, which allows you to do freeform searches of text properties within Synapse. So now let's go ahead and we'll switch over to the UI um, and we'll do a quick tour of our, or sorry, of what the PowerUp tool is. And I'll show you how you can find some additional information. Oh, this was a clunky switch. All right, here we are in our Synapse UI. And if you wanted to access the PowerUps tool, you can go over to the toolbar and there's the lightning bolt icon. We'll just go click on that. And here is our PowerUps tool. And you'll notice that there are two tabs. We have installed at the top and then we have our available tab. Currently we are in the installed tab and it shows us all of the rapid PowerUps that I've already installed in my Synapse UI. Um, if we wanted to go over to the available, we can see all of the ones that are available to install. So if we pretend that I'm a global admin for my team and I want to install additional power-ups for my team to use, um, and let's pretend that I've already 
you know, I already have my Synapse instance up and running. I've already installed my Vertex package. I've registered my uh, instance. I just want to install the Power App. So what I would do is go over to the available tab. I would pick the Power App. Let's do Synapse Datadog. Click Add. I'll get a confirm message. I can go ahead and confirm. And it will load it. And it kicked us back over to our installed tab. And here is my newly added Datadog. Um, if I made a mistake and I decided that maybe I don't want this power up anymore, I could just click to remove it. Sometimes the Vertex project will also push updates to the power ups, in which case you just see like a similar update button right here, and you would just click it to update. And if you notice that we, um, for all of our installed power ups, we have a little documentation hyperlink. So if we go and we click on that, it will kick us over to the documentation that we have specifically for Synapse Datadog. Right now, we're actually in the help tool, which if you see on the toolbar, you can see where we're here in the little question mark. And we are under the Power Ups tab. And the Power Ups tab here is going to have all of the documentation for your Power Ups that are installed in your UI. So for here, we have our Synapse Datadog. In our user guide, it walks us through how to configure our Power Up, which for um, most cases is just going to be setting your API key. Um, in this case, it's setting up the API key, but then I'll also have a personal application key. So the documentation will tell you what command you need to run for both. For setting the API key, you have the option of setting it for either the current user or you can set it globally. It's really whichever is more appropriate for your use case. So besides the, that minor configuration, you also have information about how you can use the Power Up. It will walk you through examples of um, what kind of command you can use. It will show you uh, examples with optional arguments um, if you want to use, and it will tell you also what kind of nodes, node forms that the commands will accept as input, and then what kind of node forms it will create as output, so that you know what to expect when you get results. And you'll have this documentation, um, as well as a user guide, admin guide, you know, general package documentation, and a change log for each of the power ups that are installed on your system. So if you have any, any questions about how to use something, you can go and access it either through that documentation hyperlink, or you can go to the Power Ups tab within the help tool. You don't have to be jumping in and out of your um, Synapse UI to try and figure out what that information is. It's all here for you. So with that, now that we've gone through what Power Ups are, how to install them, and how to find uh, the documentation resources, I'm going to go and hand it over to Chase, and he's going to walk us through a case study. In this case study, we're going to pretend that we were tasked with ingesting some OSINT that was published through a MISP instance. Um, we're going to use PowerUps to pull in the data, enrich it, and then do some processing so that we can identify additional tasks that we need to do. So with that, I'm going to go stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Chase. Thanks. All right. So now that we've introduced PowerUps, we're going to go ahead and walk through the case study. Uh, demonstrating how we can use power ups to help us through the entirety of our research and analysis process. So in this case study, just like Mary Beth said, we're going to be processing open source reporting from Checkpoint, and we're going to use power ups to adjust and enrich some indicators, um, aid us in performing analysis, and then we're going to use it to assist with creating um, and assigning some follow on tasks to other teams. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our uh, Synapse Miss Power Up to ingest indicators from Checkpoint's blog on activity that they attribute to an actor called Indigo Zebra. So I'm gonna use the misp.sync command. So normally this command would be run on a cron job to regularly ingest indicators um, from a missed instance on a scheduled basis. But for the purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna run this manually. So as you can see, it imported 85 nodes. So we're going to pivot into this media news node. And we got back 32 hashes, 15 FQDNs, an email address, and 18 URLs. So I'm going to bulk tag these with rep.checkpoint.indigozebra. So in the Vertex project, this literally just means to us, reported by Checkpoint as Indigo Zebra. So it just gives analyst context um, at a side glance of that it was reported by a third party as something. Um, I also have my workspace preferences set to tag third party reporting as orange. So 
without clicking into something, I can see that it there is more context there to begin with. So this will be useful later further on in this case study. So I'm going to pivot into these into these uh, or select these hashes real quick. And you see there's nothing there. So I'm going to, in our storm query bar, I'm just going to take a select just a few of these for the sake of time. And I'm going to run um, using our Synapse VX Intel power up. I'm going to download the actual file bytes from there. So as you can see, it's creating the nodes and applying edits. So this will, so what this is actually doing is it's giving us the actual physical file bytes for these hashes, as you can see here. But um, all it imports to begin with is just pretty much just the, met the hashes, not, not the full metadata of the file. But if I go back, I could send this to our file parser power up which in my workspace I have set up as a trigger. So as soon as um, a file bytes node is added, it automatically will send it to the parser. So I can already have this metadata available on the fly. This gives me a lot more context. And this is all within Synapse. But this doesn't add, you know, I still need a little more to do my investigation. So let's use our uh, hybrid analysis power up. And we're going to send these off. And then we're going to pivot in. So as you saw earlier, all we had was just a little bit of metadata from the file. But now we have um, some DNS requests. And then we also have um, INET flow nodes showing some of the, the traffic to different IP addresses. So let's pivot back up to that DNS request. And we're going to select this one. And we see this one, this help.2019mfa.com has a rep.checkpoint.indigo zebra tag. So that means that we just imported that from earlier. Um, so that's interesting that we actually see physical traffic going to it. So let's do a, um, we're going to use our net tools power up to hit the DNS service. And I'm also going to use our Whoix, I mean our URL scan uh, power up. And we're going to reach that with that as well. And then we're going to pivot in to do our to do our uh, who is data, but I'll show you real quick. We do have an A record now, and we have another URL that wasn't previously reported. So I'm just going to pivot in real quick so I can show you that we don't have this all. This is all we have right now. But I'm going to do a live lookup using the net tools power up. Who is? And then let's also do a historical lookup with who XY. OK, and you see that brought back a fair amount of data. So we'll pivot in. And now we have who is contact info. We also have email addresses. And we have the actual records. So let's pivot back, though. We're going to go back to our, to our MD files and to our file by notes from earlier. Now, um, I want to see, I noticed, I'll pivot now and show you. I noticed we don't have any Yara matches, and it's probably because I didn't run the Yara uh, power up yet. So let's go ahead and do that. OK, so I don't know if you noticed uh, earlier, every time I ran these commands, you would see such and such edits on so many nodes. Well, this one didn't come back with any. So I see here there's no matches in the Yara rules because we don't have any for them. And that's not an issue. Because all we're going to do is we're going to task our uh, our reverse engineering team to take a look at these malware samples and create us some URLs. So I'm going to use our Synapse Jira power up. 
to create a ticket for um, the reverse engineering team to review and create yarn rules for them so we can hunt for more samples in our environment. Okay, cool. So it said it made MDR60 within JIRA. So I'm going to pull that ticket in Synapse and make sure that it's actually in JIRA. So by using the yield option, it's actually going to print this out on the screen right here. So it creates a project ticket node within Synapse. So the ticket exists within JIRA. And there's also a, a node, a physical node within Synapse as well. So you can track the ticket as well. Um, so at this point, we've used Power Apps to help us ingest indicators, enrich those indicators, help aid us in our analysis of the indicators. And we've used it to create tickets for follow on tasks for other teams. So today, we primarily invoke the power ups through the storm query bar and through node actions. But keep in mind, all this I've done today could have been done through automation. Um, we're continuing to develop more power ups and have about 15 power ups currently in the works. Um, if there's a resource that you would love to have as a power up, please let us know so we can add it to our queue. Um, we can create a power up for just about anything with an API, and you could have that resource fully integrated into Synapse. Um, you can reach us through Twitter, email, or Slack. And that's all we have for today, and thank you for joining us.